Our next speaker is Gita Sikanji. She is a um, professional in the medical and healthcare industry, a writer, an activist for the Hindu American community, and also an executive member of A4H, Americans for Hindus. Gita Namaste, everyone. Um, my uh, task today is to share with you my experiences and the experiences of others in our Hindu American community on the challenges in media representation. With a show of hands, how many of you have tried to reach out to the media, submit a rebuttal or submit an op-ed piece? Okay. So next time we do this, I want to see every hand go up. Right? Okay. Thank you to all who've done it already. Okay, so moving forward. Um, So, uh, like I said, we're talking about the challenges in media representation. And so, how many of us know already that Hinduphobia is real and rampant, and yet the media is distinctly averse to listening to us? We have been silenced. Hindu voices have been silenced. We've tried, but when it comes to airing our own Hinduphobia concerns, we're not getting any success. When we criticize because it's an anti-Hindu hate article, we still don't get any hospitality from the media. So what we are noticing is our topics of discussion today, how does the media perpetuate Hinduphobia? And who are the perpetrators? And then I'm going to share my own personal story uh, with the LA Times and the New York Times and Washington Post. <laughs> so the first goal today is how does the media perpetuate Hinduphobia? So for that, I'm going to show you right here. This is an article from the Los Angeles Times. It was published on the 2nd of February. And it had two Hinduphobic dis disinformation items that I wanted to point out to the uh, newspaper outlet. So you can see how I read my articles. See all those red ink there? <laughs> I really analyze it. Okay, so this was a rebuttal I submitted to them, and I don't expect us to read the rebuttal, but I'll share with you the highlights that I pointed out. The first one was that in this article where they claim that Modi is not running a democracy, but a theocracy, or he's a fascist, all this anti-Hindu hate narratives. I looked at that, and I said, huh, what's missing here? What's missing is the Pew study. How many of you have heard of the Pew study that showed that all minorities in India feel free to practice their religion? Have you ever read about that in the mainstream media? Not once. The evidence has been subverted, and instead, instead, as you can see in this slide, they're stating the Prime Minister's militant Hindu supremacy has replaced political pluralism as India's dominant. Oh, not moving forward. Sophie, can you give me a hand here? Now you can read all of this, right? The Prime Minister's militant Hindu supremacy has replaced political pluralism as India's dominant ideology. So this is what they're writing, a false Hindu hate narrative. Now let's go to the next slide. They also subverted the findings from the 2022 study from the University of Sydney, Australia. It was called The Status of India's Democracy. How many of you have heard of this study? Okay, a couple of people. So what did Dr. Uh, Professor Salvador Babonsky uh, conclude from this study? He said, 
India is not a fascist country. It is being wrongly portrayed as a fascist state by the global media. And he acknowledged very nicely, he said, activists, journalists, and intellectuals absolutely have a role to call out problems. And India has problems, like all countries have problems. But the problem is they allow intentionally to color the overall evaluation of the system. So when they said the democracy rankings have slid down, they did that by the numbers and not as a percentage. So India's population is so much. So naturally, the numbers will be higher than other countries. But when you look at it from percentage, it's very low. And those are the uh, things he pointed out. So his paper is called Indian Democracy at 75. Who are the barbarians at the gate? And that's the media that he's talking about, that they have colored it. So he said, this is a very interesting statement from Professor Baboon. He said, anti-Hindu Western intellectuals do not fear the rise of India, they resent it. <laughs> and he also pointed out that just as the Western anti-Semites are offended by the success of Israel, Western anti-Hinduists are offended by the success of India. Any time subverted some key facts about the Ram Mandir, which as we know, many of the media outlets did. And um, what did they subvert? They subverted that it's a large Hindu temple of Ram stood there for 1,500 years prior. They just said it was, you know, a mosque and it was destroyed and on and on, right? So they, they hid a lot, carrying 100 pounds on our shoulders trying to fight it. That's the time we, um, Sundar wrote to uh, Jong Park, who is a columnist for LA Times. He said, dear Jong, who will tell governor the truth? I am available as, he gave his phone number, let me know if that works for you. And I was copied on this email. He said, I will give you first-hand proof of that CRD truth. They did not interview him. Can you believe that? They were just rejecting the truth. Then, um, in, on October 7, as you all know, he vetoed it. But prior to that, and I'll come back to this in a second, on September 7th, we all were standing in Sacramento in a peace rally asking, we were asking the governor to please veto. And that's what we were saying. And we all had our fingers on our lips in another photograph saying that we have been silenced. Our Hindu voices have been silenced. So now if you see, October 7th, the SB403 was vetoed. And on December 29th, Again, Sundar reached out to, the, to LA Times. I was copied on the email. He said, Dear John, I hope you're well. I did not receive a response from you. Will you stand up for the truth with me? I seek your help and cooperation. Again, nothing, nothing from uh, LA Times. So in summary, anti-Hindu hate by the US media is real and happening in front of our eyes with a deafening silence by the media. Ironically, nothing in the Western media about Hindus is ever written by authentic Hindu scholars themselves. This is called journalistic malpractice. You know, for medical professionals, we say medical malpractice. This is journalistic malpractice. And this must stop. The real threat to Hindus is right here right now, most especially to our future generations. So I'm telling the media this. So do something imperfect, frustrating, depressing, and slippery as it may be. This discourse is all we have. So going forward, and I just published this yesterday uh, in the Voice of Hindus, the tips, and Professor Gita, as they call me, to stop propagating Hindu phobia. We said media must begin a meaningful dialogue with Hindus. Media must stop demonizing and shaming Hindutva. Hindutva means the essence of Hinduism and not some nasty, you know, uh, hostile, aggressive people, right? Okay, they're just shaming us by saying that. Stop publishing articles written with intentional deceit. We know now that it's intentional deceit. Stop the bigoted caste legislation hoax. And 
stop the brutal attacks on Hindu temples. So the media really needs to do its job. It's not doing its job. Stop the vile and hateful tropes that demean Hindus or that has been denied a platform, a group which has not been consulted. Are we Hindu Americans a microcosmic, law-abiding, model minority that continues to be targeted by the anti-Hindu hate groups and the media? So here we go. I have 19 reference links for you all in the back. Just go to any of those. The first four are my own publications from the Voice of Hindus. And everything I talked about is all in there, including the 35 rebuttals. They are actually published, one through 35, in, uh, in one of these references. And so with that, uh, thank you for being here. And if you have any questions. Question. Yes. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, our younger generation, they read about this and uh, yes. all they hear about this in media and they believe them more than they believe us. So uh, I feel that there has to be some comprehensive uh, knowledge based data that we can show to our kids because they feel like, no, but this reporter says that or BBC is saying that. And you know, so no matter what we say, the younger generation is not ready to hear. That's a fabulous question and a comment, and I'm totally on your page. We really need to have that. And so when I heard uh, Congressman Sri Panidaji say he wants to introduce a resolution on Hindu phobia, I was like, wow, we need that. But we need much more now. We can't wait for the resolution. We need something to happen now, right? So let's all put our heads together and think how we could do this because not only your kids or my kids, but all kids, Indian kids, are totally, we've lost them yes. to all of this. So it's a real tragedy for us and we need to do something about it. I agree.